Welcome back to the PFO channel. I'm Jim. Today we're going to do the tour of the inside of this greenhouse that I promised you. Uh, this is in the winter, so this is off season for the greenhouse. Every season in the garden has its interesting differences. Uh, one of the more interesting things today is the, the thin layer of freezing drizzle that we've had. So hopefully I can get inside this greenhouse without slipping and breaking something, either on myself or on the surroundings. Don't want to break any of that. But go ahead and hit that subscribe button in the lower right so you don't miss any uh, future installments on, on our channel. So let's go on inside and take a look around inside the greenhouse. I think in the other video I mentioned that we've got the two sets of double doors, one at each end of the 24 foot length. And those are pretty handy in the summer. We can prop those open, they swing outwards, so it doesn't encroach on our interior space in here. We've had up to 26 in here, Thanksgiving dinners and Easter dinners and baby showers and engagement parties and just general family get togethers and meals with friends. One of the neighbors worked for many years at a company that had a lot of wooden shipping crates coming and going. And he gathered up a huge stack of that reclaimed crate material, hoping someday to build something with it. And he finally decided he was never going to get around to it. So we were more than happy to take that off of his hands and use that to build this greenhouse. That's all of the rafters, all of the wood between the windows. The only thing that didn't come from that is the wood attached to the window sashes themselves and the treated wood, which is the, the posts here, the corner posts and then this knee wall along the bottom, and it's got treated plywood on the exterior part of that. But all the rest of the wood came from the crate material. The crate lumber was pretty interesting. You can still see some of the stenciling on it. I don't know if you can see that. That one kind of, yeah, it's kind of hard to see. Where else we got some of that? Oh yeah, here's, here's, some of the remaining evidence of the the crate lumber you got some of that this side up action going on there you can still see it quite well down there on the front of that uh, the chandeliers are second hand as well we got a matching set on the ends and then a nice crystal chandelier in the middle that's kind of the centerpiece When we got this, it was polished brass, and Renee took it apart bit by bit and sanded it down and painted it white to look a little bit more at home out here, kind of match the decor in here. Ah, these windows, I mentioned on the exterior tour that these all pop out at the bottom, and these sashes, they had the existing sash locks on them, so I kept those in service. They're spring-loaded. So those hinge out at the bottom. I've got these little latches to prop them open so the wind doesn't throw them around. And all of the lower levels open up like that to increase the ventilation during the summer when you need ventilation. Right now I really don't. So I'm gonna close it again. This little reclaimed dresser I had to Manufacture one of the drawers. It was missing a drawer when we got it So I covered that with some galvanized sheet and put a collection of knobs on it. That's our beverage station Well, these lamp stands are interesting. We got those for a couple dollars a piece at garage sales and I took the lamp portions off the top de-electrified them and we put baskets up top and uh, we put live plants in those, like a big fern or a big set of potted plants or whatever for in the summertime. Those have graced the sides of at least one altar at, the, at one of the weddings we had out here. This door surround was really interesting. This had square cut nails on it holding it together, so it's an old bugger. I don't know, that, that puts it probably back into the mid-1800s sometimes.
that's a stained glass window that my dad collected somewhere years ago and that seemed like a good place for it when he was done with it. This is the sink that I mentioned on the outside tour. If you haven't seen that video yet, check the playlist below. That's the one section wall that doesn't have glass on it. I did that on purpose so I'd have a place for this sink area. This is uh, just pretty much hooked up to a garden hose in the summertime. It's winterized right now, but that is a handy place for any non-potable water needs. Over in this corner, we have a drink station for cold drinks. We fill this galvanized wash tub with ice and I've got a drain hole in the bottom of it here, strategically placed. It's on an old uh, iron porcelain covered pedestal, sink pedestal, but I made a, a functional floor drain in there out of an old iron floor register. And that goes out to a French drain. So as the ice melts, it drips down there and doesn't make a slip hazard on the floor. These beams, somebody asked a question about where'd we get these beams and what are they and how'd we get them up there? Uh, these are red pine, also known as Norway pine, and we harvested those right from our own property. Cut them and we peeled them with a draw knife and brought them in here and hoisted them up. And I put those up before the roofing was on. So what I did is I hung a chain around the ridge pole there and connected it to a chain fall and strapped around the logs and slowly hoisted them up to put them into position. The ends, uh, I had to cut the round uh, to transition down to a, a square end so that it would lay well on the top plate and have a nice interface surface to bolt into the sides of the posts. Get you a close up of the, the end of that or just as a, a bevel on each side and the bottom coming into a square or a rectangle is probably more accurate so that it matches up with the top plate in the side of the post and then is bolted into place. These trim boards here, uh, those are a combination. Some of those I, I rip cut some of the crate material and then ran it through my router table. Some of those though are from leftover house logs, the white cedar that our main house is built from. We had quite a few leftover logs when we built that. And I ran a lot of those through the table saw and ripped them into two by twos and then ran them through my router table to cut those trim pieces. And we used a lot of that around here, just like over the, the door there and all the way around the, the top. There's a layer of that. And we used white semi-transparent wood stain on this because we didn't want to hide the character of the wood, but we did want to give it a whitewashed look. Well, that's the quick tour of the inside. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if there's other things you see in this tour and you'd like more information about it, go ahead and comment down below and then be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it if and when I put an update on to answer your question. Thanks a lot for watching.